talk about the today's youth service, uh, youth focus, and um, I think it's we mentioned earlier. I'm the youth pastor for uh, Abundant Life, and I don't take it lightly that I am the youth pastor. I love working with the young adults, the youth. I've always felt like that was my calling to be a part of whatever. I could do to help young people, so I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak to them, and not just the youth, but I think we all can learn. You know, we never at a point where we know it all, so I just pray that this word today will be a blessing for you, that it will feed you, um, you know, give you any wisdom that the Lord wants to share with you today. So let me pray. Father, I just ask that you will um, come into this atmosphere. We thank you already for the worship that's gone forward. We just thank you for your presence, for your sweet spirit that's been in this um, atmosphere, God. And I just ask you would just continue that throughout this service, Father. I ask that you would put everything aside, anything within me that is not uh, that would not help the word go forward. I ask that you would put it aside, that every word that comes out of my mouth would be just what you want for the people, dear God, that you will feed them through me. And I thank you for the for allowing me to be the vessel that's above, uh, in front of the people today, dear God. So I just thank you for what you're going to bring to us, dear God. And I ask that it would be a blessing, not just for them, but for me as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so, um, like I was saying, today is youth focus. And so the theme was, uh, I am a Joshua leader. Um, so that comes from the scripture, Joshua 1, 9. And that, that's not what I'm preaching from today, but that's just kind of like the theme of what everything is talking about. And so I'll relate it back to what I have to say. But Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And what I'm coming to you today from is, the Lord kept talking to me this week and just saying, now. I just kept hearing, now. It's now. Not tomorrow, not ten years from now. Now is your time. <clears throat> and I think that's important because there are some things that we need to realize in order to be a Joshua leader. Um, if anyone is unfamiliar with the story of Joshua, he is the leader for the Israelites after Moses has died. And so, Moses has died and... Um, in the scripture, kind of before that, in Joshua 1, 2, it says, Now, or Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I am about to give you. And so that scripture tying into that Joshua leader, there, there's going to be a time when God is saying, Okay, now is the time. Now I, I need you to do the work. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today. It's kind of what are the things that we need to realize in order to be that Joshua leader, to be able to uh, look, talk to the people, to lead the people in the way that God has for them. <clears throat> so the scripture that I will be kind of taking apart today is Jeremiah 29 and 11. And we've heard it before, I've heard it before, but the Lord was just showing some new things to me in Jeremiah 29, and I just wanted to share those with you. Yeah. <clears throat> he says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And one other verse that um, was kind of resonating with me uh, is James 4.14. And it's just kind of reminiscent, like just repeating the, the thought that kept coming to me about now. It says, How do you know? what your life will be like tomorrow. Your life is like the morning fall. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. And that scripture, like I said, it's just kind of reaffirming this, this concept that God was speaking to me about, now is the time. Amen. And I thought it was really fitting for the youth service because a lot of times we tell our young people that, oh, well, you do that in five years. Right. Or, you can't do this now because you're too young. And I think what God is really trying to tell us is that we need to stop that. Amen. You know, just because someone's 13 doesn't mean that they can't 
that God can't give them a revelation, that God can't give them a prophecy, that God can't give them the gift of healing. We need to stop telling people, well, now, now, now is not your time. And like I said, I, I have such a heart for young people, so I always, it always bothered me that we tell young people that, well, now is not your time. Because I think that we are put here and God can use us right then and there. Amen. And so we have to realize that we don't know what tomorrow is. We assume that because people are young that they will live here for 50, 60, 70 years, but just living in Chicago all my life, I can see that that's not the case. That we have people dying every day, young people, young black men and women, young Hispanic men and women die every day. So we don't know that we don't that we have tomorrow. So God is saying that we don't we don't need to be relaxed and comfortable thinking that well, we'll, ha we'll have 20 years to do whatever it is. If God gives you a plan, if God gives you a vision, you need to start doing the work now. Amen. Amen. So back to Jeremiah 29, like I said, the verse that I wanted to pull apart, when it says, I have plans for you. I looked up the word plans, and a plan is an orderly arrangement of parts of an overall design or objective. So God has a huge design scheme for our lives, for our lives in general, for society, for the world, but for individuals, he has this master design. And when I looked at the word design, it says to have a purpose, as a purpose. So, you know, God didn't put us here just because he's like, well, I could just use another human out of the seven billion on the earth, you know, just, just drop them down, we'll just, they just do whatever they want. No, he put you here. He put you here for a very specific reason. He gave you very specific characteristics. He gave you very specific uh, talents and, and desires. All of the things that are of you were not an accident. Amen? And then for future, it's something that's about to be. So, you know, a lot of times we, like I said, we think of the future, we think we have a lot of time. and. You know, sometimes, thankfully, the Lord does allow us to have a long time in the service. So we can type, start to think about, okay, well, what do I want for my future? You know, where do I want to be in five years? And God has, God's thinking about that same thing. We see ourselves right here and now, but he's always thinking of, I see you here. Yeah. I see I see this plan, and you're going to, you know, fulfill this plan here. Um, so sometimes we have to align ourselves with what is God's future for us, because... Right. We don't know, but he does. Amen? Amen. And then the last one is a, a hope. So he says he did, to give you a future and a hope. A hope is something, it's uh, like we have an anticipation about it. It's something that we really want. Right, Usually right. you don't hope for something negative. I don't hope to die. Like, I don't hope to get sick. Right. I hope to have a you know, a good relationship with my family, and I hope to, you know, be financially stable. You always have hopes for something that's positive. Amen. Amen. And for God, it's the exact same thing. He, he, he has plans for us that are positive. He always um, is looking for the best result Amen. for our lives. Amen. He's never trying to destruct us. That's the enemy. That's Satan. He's always looking for destruction, but God... He always has it in our in, in his mind for our best. Amen. Amen. So a little background about Jeremiah, um, the book of Jeremiah, is it kind of deals with warnings of destruction and Israel was kind of turning away from God and so he had to kind of bring her up some correction. But in the in chapter 29, specifically there's these promises of new things, of a coming king, of, of being restored. And so, um, after he's, Jeremiah is telling them, you know, after there's this time, there's this 70 years of captivity. And what I thought was interesting is that Jeremiah doesn't tell them this prophecy when they're in like year 35 or <laughs> year 69. It's like, oh, you only got one more year. He tells them in the beginning <laughs> of captivity that you're going to be in exile for 70 years. But there's a there's a, uh, a, a end to this. 
right. that you won't be in captivity for forever. Right. That once this is done, God is going to restore you. God Amen. will bring something new. And I, like I said, I think it was interesting that he told me this in the beginning because sometimes I think we get discouraged when we see that things are not going the way they want, that we want. Amen. Like I said, I, I really... I really was just like looking at the destruction and the things that have been happening in Chicago, in the country, along the lines of, you know, black lives and things like that. I felt grieved. Like, I couldn't watch the TV anymore. I couldn't be on social media anymore because I know that that's not what God wants. You know, we don't need to be in this place of destruction. I know where it's coming from. I know it's the enemy. The enemy, we were talking about in Sunday school today, he comes to divide. Mm -hmm. And the way that we've gotten caught up in the world is that we've allowed these divisions, racism, sexism, classism, to divide us and put one above the other. If I'm this, then I'm better than you. If I'm that, then I have this. And we've allowed those things to come into our society and create havoc. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. He's coming for destruction. The end goal is destruction, whether it be physical, spiritual, mental, that's his game. And we, we can't allow the division to kind of take our eyes off of what is really at hand, that we need to be fighting against the enemy, that we need to be, be about love, that we need to understand that all lives matter, really matter. And when they don't, we need to be about that justice to bring about all lives matter because in God's eyes we are all one. No one is better than the other. If one life is lo if one is losing their life, we need to be worried about that life because they're all precious. Amen. Amen. We can't we can't shun the crack dealer because of what they do because they're no better than me. Just because I had never done a drug before doesn't mean I'm better than them. I need to be just as concerned about them as you know as someone would be concerned about me. Amen. Amen. So, just looking at that captivity and exile, sometimes we can feel like we're in that season of exile. Um, and it's as dark and depressing as sometimes those situations may feel, like I said before, but God has an end game. Amen. He Amen. has a whole other plan that we don't ever understand that is going to be so much greater than we could even fix. Because sometimes, like, like I said, sometimes I sit at home and I think, like, man, like, if we just, if we just fix the police system or if we just, like, let people understand, like, this and this. I try to finagle all the ways that we could fix society, but God has even higher thoughts. Amen. He's going to fix it in a way that I couldn't even imagine. Right. Because in the end, his, his plan is always for our good. Amen. So, um, So then, you know, when we think about these plans, sometimes there's questions um, that could arise. So, it's, you know, what are God's plans for me? Yeah. Like this, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 doesn't say, and for you, Jocelyn, your plan is A, B, C, D. You know, it doesn't necessarily line it out for us. And so sometimes, you know, I mean, that's the that's the question. What are, what are God's plans for me? What does he want me to do? Um, and then another question could be, well, when do these plans, so-called, come into effect? Right. Like I said before, you know, sometimes we get into a habit of telling young people that, well, your plan doesn't really, your, your, your start date for your plan is 2020. <laughs> or, you know, you can hold off till you graduate high school or college or whatever. But, like, I, I just really think that the Lord is saying that your plan starts now. Amen. Amen. The minute you accept me into your life and you decide that you want to live for me, then your plan starts today. Amen. And then the last question is, well, what can I do about this? How can I put this into action? Because at the end of the day, that's really the most important thing. When you get the knowledge and you get the understanding that God has something for you, then you need to be about the work. It's not just about all of what I know and you know, what's kind of in my mind, if I'm not putting it into action, it's kind of null and void. So understanding what, what I can do about these plans that God has for me now. So, 
the illustration that I got when I was kind of thinking about this is the life cycle of a butterfly. Hmm. So the butterfly has four stages um, and each stage has a very specific purpose to the kind of overall um, change of a butterfly. And if I was, when I was looking this up the other day, I also learned that um, the metamorphosis that a butterfly goes through, it's called a complete metamorphosis, mm -hmm. which means that you know the baby butterfly is completely different than what an adult butterfly is because the baby butterfly is a caterpillar. So you know it's a completely different bug. And mm -hmm. Basically, you know if you didn't know anything, you would think that they were not related at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this life cycle that they go through is a complete metamorphosis. The caterpillar doesn't even eat the same things the butterfly right. does. Mm -hmm. And so just this understanding that you know God wants us to go sometimes through this complete metamorphosis That's where what we were when we started is just a whole another creature hmm. from what we <clears throat> end in. That's good. Amen. That's good. That's good. So the first stage uh, is an egg. And so the things that I found that were interesting is that a female butterfly will lay um, a bunch of their little eggs on a leaf. And that leaf that they lay their eggs on is the food source for which they are kind of going to grow off of. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I liked about it is like similar to kind of how we're born into an environment, into a family, those things will kind of naturally shape us, sometimes better for worse. but kind of where we're planted is what we will feed off of. Amen. And so like I said, in the natural, we're born into specific families, but in the spiritual, if we are born of and placed into the word, that if we feed on that word, it will kind of create the proper environment to shape how we grow. Amen. And the second stage is the caterpillar. Like I said, we kind of recognize what the caterpillar does. So they, they come out of the egg and they are a caterpillar. And it says the caterpillar is born hungry. <laughs> it has rapid growth. It's constantly stretching and growing. Sometimes, some caterpillars can grow up to a hundred times their original size. <laughs> and so every time they kind of grow, they'll like split, they'll kind of like come out of their old skin and shed their own skin, old skin in, in order to grow. Uh, and, and at this time, like I said, they're born hungry, so they're constantly eating because they have to prepare for the next stage. Caterpillars, the whole purpose of being a caterpillar is just to get energy, to get food to, in order to be able to do all of the changes that they will have to do. And so, again, connecting that to us is, you know, once we are put in the Word, we are born hungry and we need to start to feed on Amen. the word. Amen. And that God will start to do things fast sometimes. Amen. Sometimes he will come and just start to show you things back to back to back. He'll start to you know, give you insight into your vision. Give you uh, uh, wisdom to share whatever you're learning so you can just begin, continue to get that knowledge, to get that energy to be uh, greater, to go forward and do whatever changes it is that God has for you. Amen. That's and then cool. the third stage is the pupa, the, the actual like chrysalis that the butterfly goes into when it started to change. So at this stage, they say that the caterpillar it stops growing. And for a lot of people looking at a chrysalis, you would think, okay, did it die? Mm. What's going on? Like, is it sleeping? And these, these chrysalis can kind of be... They, there's no activity. You don't see anything. So you mm -hmm. to think like, okay, first it was a caterpillar, it was a bug that was eating all this stuff, and now it's just there. You know, it's just a bump. Or, <laughs> you know, it's it doesn't look like anything's happening, mm -hmm. but inside, mm -hmm. they said that there are special cells that in the caterpillar's body start to grow and become completely different things. Wow. Organs reshape mm -hmm. and and different um, pieces of the caterpillar start to move around in order to become that adult butterfly. So 
what that spoke to me was that sometimes we don't look like we're doing anything on the outside to people around us. But on the inside, after we've done all this word searching and, you know, seeking after God, that God begins to do all of these things on the inside of us that no one even understands. They may call you crazy. They may look at you funny. But God is doing all this inside work because he knows what he has planned for you. He knows the future. He knows what your end game is, your end goal is. And so sometimes we have to really push aside what other people are saying That's because right. they don't understand what's going on That's in me. Right. They don't understand the work God's doing in me. Right. And until they see the butterfly, they may never understand. Right. But at the end of the day, I know that God is doing this in me. And so I'm going to continue to keep resting, keep yes. looking like I'm doing nothing because I know God's working in Amen. me. So I just thought that, that was... That's so so interesting to yeah. even understand like just how much um, change can be happening in a place when you don't see it. Amen. 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 And so the last stage, the last stage is that butterfly. And so the advantages of the butterfly is that it can fly where the caterpillar yes. couldn't. Right. And they're no longer growing um, per se. And their main goal is to go out and plant. The female butterfly, their main goal is to go out and plant eggs and multiply. Amen. And so, like I said, you know, this caterpillar is a completely different bug than the butterfly. Some, we'll go from the caterpillar, and we may have had one goal, we may have had one purpose, and now we have a completely different purpose as that butterfly. And so we need to be able to do the purpose of that butterfly. I can't, Man. a butterfly can't be like, well, I just want to eat all day. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Right, right, right. You, you pass that stage. You know, and it says they're no longer growing, but but I think even still, they butterflies still feed, they still eat, because they still need that energy. So even though they may not necessarily be kind of growing on an outside level, they still have to maintain themselves and, and continue to feed themselves in order to survive. Because like I said, the goal is to then go out and multiply. Amen. And if they don't feed themselves, they can't, they'll die. Yep. Yep. So for us, even though we may not necessarily be doing the same kind of feeding or, or process that a caterpillar is doing, we still need to be in the word, in in uh, filling ourselves with energy Amen. because now we have to go out and share. Amen. And we can't share anything if we don't have anything. Right. So as a butterfly, we have to be able to have enough to share. Amen. And God is always going to be able to provide Amen. all that we need, all that we uh, you know, uh, need in order to share with those other people. Amen. So, like I said, the the illustration of the butterfly was just so uh, interesting to me to think because it's because even though, like I said, one stage has one purpose, that that purpose has to happen now. Amen. The egg right. could right. not just not do what it needed to do. Right. Right. It had to eat. It had to feed off of that leaf. The caterpillar couldn't say, "Well, I'm going to eat two years from now," mm. because then it wouldn't have enough energy to become that butterfly. Right. So each stage, each purpose had to be fulfilled at that moment, at Amen. that time, in that specific order, in order to be out, be able to go out and share, be able to go out and become that butterfly. And so the same thing is with us: is that each stage, no matter where we are, you know, you may be an egg right now, you may be in your chrysalis right now but at the end of the day you need to do the work that you need to do now Amen. you need to do whatever Amen. stage that you're in whatever part of the plan that right. God has shown you right. Right. you need right. to do the work right now right. because right. you need to get to the next stage right. Amen. Amen. so to sum this all up I just really uh, wanted to answer that question well how do I how do I like what now what do I how do I get there so Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13 says, In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Amen. And that's really it. Mm. You know, we need to start looking for him wholeheartedly. Young Amen. people need to start realizing the need for God now. Amen. Because we, I mean, if, if I knew what I knew now, Five years ago, 
I probably wouldn't have gone through some of the things I had to go, I went through in order to get here. I'm not saying that the past is a mistake, but we need to be encouraging young people to take the steps now because who knows what God has for them. Right. God, right. like I said, our God's plan for us starts the moment we accept him into our life. Amen. And unless we start doing the work now, we're just pushing his plan back. And I mean, his plan is perfect, so it's going to come to fruition. But why would we push a perfect plan back? Amen. Why would we push the best for us back? Why would you wait for the best when you can have it right Amen. now? Amen. Amen. So, so the yeah, the goal is to get to work now. Amen. And like I said, this message is really for anybody because it doesn't matter if you're 75 or 7. Right. The right. plan starts now. Right. Right. So we need to start seeking him. We need to start asking. We need to start looking for ways in order to enact our plan now because the end plan could be that, you know, the plan could be so large but each piece of the design has to come together in the right way. Amen. And we need to start piecing together even even just a little, even just the little pieces here and there, here and there because they're all going to come together for his plan. Amen. So Back to that Joshua, back to that leader, because the time is now. We can't we can't rely on what Moses did. We can't rely on the work he did because that was his plan. He finished his plan. Right. Now it's Joshua's plan. Right. Right. Now we right. need to put in the work for our plan. So so the time is now, the work is now. God is right here asking and seeking, what do you, what do you want to, you know? How do you want to know me better? How do you want to grow? How do you right, want right, to right. how do you want to seek after me more? Because I got the plan right here. It's all right. laid out. Amen. And I just need you to come to me so you can see what it is that I have for you. And Amen. be strong and courageous. Because it doesn't matter what may what may uh, what people may say or what it looks like on the outside. He's doing the work. If you Amen. continue to follow him, he's gonna keep doing the work no matter what. No matter what it may look like, no matter how how your exile may look like, he's still going to do the work for you and the plan will come through. Right, right. Amen. So, to close, it's just, I just want to remind you of Joshua 1 9. Just be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Like I said, no matter the exile, no matter the, the hassle, don't be afraid. He's right there. God's right there. The plan is all laid out. He just wants you to seek Him wholeheartedly. Right. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Wherever you go. Each phase of that cycle, each step you got to take, He's right there. So, He's just asking, you know, when are you going to come see me? When are you going to come look for me? Because I'm here. It's like playing hide and seek and the person is right in front of your face. <laughs> He's saying, I'm here. You don't have to guess where I'm going. I'm standing right here. I'm waiting for you. I'm not even walking away. You don't have to catch up to me. I'm waiting for you. Right, right. So just open your eyes. I'm right here. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's what uh, the Lord had for me to share today. Um, if there's anybody that wants prayer um, anybody feels like this message spoke to them that you know they're looking for more ways to seek God um, if anybody doesn't know God you know, and they want to understand what is this plan that he has for me what is she what is talking about what how can I understand this and yeah, just ask that you come to the front.